we're live, I think. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to the last week of our Sew Along for 2024. So we're going to be talking about borders today. If you're joining me live, uh, say hi, just so we know that you can hear us. Um, and thank you for joining us live. If you're not joining us live and you're watching this later on, I don't blame you. It is an absolutely beautiful spring day out there. I think we're going to go for a walk after this is all done. Again, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already done that. And post your finished quilts in our Facebook group and make sure that you ask any questions that we have um, or that you have. Please ask us any questions here. Or your in-progress quilts. They don't have to be finished yet. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay, so today we're going to talk about borders. Looks like we have six viewers. I'm hoping someone will say hi so we know they can hear us. Somebody say hi. Hi, hi, hi. Oh, Janet says good afternoon. Okay, good, perfect. They can hear us. Um, all right, so I really wanted to spend some time talking to you about borders. I have seen some quilts that people have made. The piecing was wonderful, um, beautiful, spent so much time. And then they put their borders on wrong. They just grabbed their borders, started sewing on the top, sewing all to the bottom. All of a sudden... Um, the borders were very uh, full, they were wavy, they wouldn't lay flat. And me as a long armor, when I tried to long arm some of them, I literally had to take tucks in the border, in the quilt, some up to almost an inch. Um, so it really took that quilt that was absolutely perfect down a notch. So I don't want that to happen to you. So we're going to talk about the proper way to put on borders. You've got your page that uh, we put on the uh, Facebook group this morning the f in the files and for our cutting. So we cut two and a half inch strips. I'll just go over the lap. On our paper also has um, for the queen and the king size, they have the um, extra borders that you need or the extra sizes. Uh, so we're gonna be putting three borders on our quilt. So um, I have them all cut. And the first thing I want to do is join them all together into one long piece. Couple ways that we can do this. Um, I have my border done here for this quilt. It's ready to go because I wanted to use some fabric that had salvages on it. Um, it'll, it'll show a little bit easier what I am talking about when I'm sewing my borders. So when you sew your borders, you can either sew them with a diagonal seam, which is a seam like that, or an actual, where'd it go? Where'd it go? My other piece of fabric. Thank Maybe you, it's... Tiffany. There, this one. I use two different colors here because I'm going to talk about this in a minute. Um, so you can sew two pieces together with either a straight seam or with a diagonal seam. Rule of thumb back in the day, we always sewed things with a diagonal seam because it didn't show as much they thought as a straight seam. Um, now we have a little bit more lenient. We don't have the quilt police, so you can sew them together the way you have decided to sew. I don't know why, but when I'm sewing a smaller border, one and a half, two and a half, three inches, I like to sew it on a diagonal. A show quilt is usually always on the diagonal. A show, that's that's a yeah. good point. A show quilt would always be on the diagonal because they follow the rules specifically. If I'm putting a big six and a half inch border on a quilt, and if I'm doing a diagonal, you've wasted six and a half inches of border fabric on both ends of your strip. So um, I'm a little bit more frugal. So when I have a big border like that, I like to just straight piece them. And all I would do is put them together, cut the end off and then sew with my quarter inch seam. Alrighty, so I am going to show you how to sew them on a diagonal, which is really important because when we're doing our binding, we're going to do the exact same thing. Binding has to be um, done on a diagonal as opposed to a straight seam. And we'll go over that a little bit more 
at the end of the video. Um, alrighty, so I've got my two strips of fabric and like most fabrics, it has an end that has what I call a salvage and a not salvage. Usually it's a, it's a not printed salvage, but it um, still has a salvage there that you do have to cut off. I never cut my salvages off first and here's the reason why. If I know what end of my salvage is which, I can put them together and I will always have the, the direction of my fabric going always uh, the same way. So if I had a little face or a little flower or something on here, I won't have to think if I do it my way. It will always be that all my strips will be sewn together in the correct right direction. So I don't have to sit here trying to figure out what side is up on my strips. So here's what I do. I take my mat and I'll take my first strip and line it up on a strip of my mat. I will take my second strip with the opposite which, salvage. With the opposite salvage. So I've got a salvage here and what I'm calling a not salvage. It's a not printed salvage. I'm going to line it up, staggering it like this. And you've used the lines of your mat? I am losing the lines of my mat to line everything up so it stays nice and straight. So there's two ways to do this. Since I only brought the one extra strip, I'm not going to sew it right now, but you can draw your line, sew on your line, cut your excess off. But if you are one of the lucky people that have bought the folded corner ruler, this has changed the way I do binding. So nowhere ever in the instructions uh, that came with the ruler said that you could use it for binding, but it works so, so well. Anytime also, if you have a big strip that going through your center of your, of your um, quilt might have to be on a diagonal piece, I always use this ruler. It keeps my edges lined up very well. If I was just drawing the line, I almost have to uh, remember previously on the videos, I almost have to analyze where I've driven, drawn the line, sorry, um, and I have to decide where I'm going to sew on what side of the line because I just can't draw lines straight. So I've got my bottom strip with my salvage lined up on a, on a line of my mat. I've got my second strip with the opposite end on top of it. Um, and I have the salvages that are over, um, um, overlapping or they're 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 past overhanging. my overhanging thank you that's the word okay so remember um, on this the trick is the flat top and this solid line here I am going to line the top on the top of my strip the solid line on the side of my strip I am going to see because of whether our uh, borders are cut at two and a half or if it's binding I always cut it two and a half I've got my two and a half inch line down this side and my two and a half inch line on this edge of the ruler. So all I'm going to do is I'm gonna cut this off. I can cut off that little dog ear. I can go to my iron or my sewing machine and sew. I love doing this right beside my sewing machine because I'm not jiggling my strip around too much. So I'll, I'll pin the bottom I will line this up and I will go over to the sewing machine. Needle down, foot up, and off we go. Oh, Rita says hello from sunny Ottawa. Ooh. Hi, Rita. Okay, so when I'm sewing multiple strips, I will sew with my needle in the down position. I've sewn this end. What I will do is I'll grab my strip, leave it in here. This end is underneath my foot. It's holding my threads. You know, the same as we've been doing previously on chain piecing. I will take my strip. Again, you can see now I have again that salvage with the salvage. I have my end with my salvage, my not salvage. Pretending I that's a whole strip. Pretending it's a whole strip, lining it up. I am going to again take my ruler. I can cut, lining up my flat top with the top of the strip. 
my solid line with the, the left side of the strip, my two and a half with the right side, and my two and a half with the bottom of the uh, bottom strip. Cutting, cutting. I can get rid of this little dog ear if I wanted to, and I will go back to my sewing. And I will continue on like that until all my strips are sewn together, which in this case would be six for the lap. Um, but if it's binding for queen size, sometimes it's upwards around 10 11. 10 or 11. So I'm going to uncut in between and I'm ready to go and press. So again, I want to set my seam. And what is the difference between borders and binding here? With the pressing. Oh, with the pressing? Okay, perfect. So with a border, I'm just going to press my seam to one side. If it was for a binding, I want to press my seam open. And just to keep things less confusing, I will talk about binding a little bit more after we get our border on. Okay. So binding, pressing open. When it's a border, we can just press to the side. Alrighty. So I want to make sure that my border fits my quilt perfectly. And there's a right way to do it. And uh, what I call my no math method which isn't exactly the perfect method, but here's the thing. Um, okay, so just gonna... what we want to do is remember that on the edge of our quilt, we have all of these seams that can open up and they can stretch. And sometimes we're our very own worst enemy because we are so excited about our quilt, we keep holding it up and going, look what we did, look what we did. And it is um, um, stretching the edge. So now the edge isn't stable, so it could be warped a little bit. So the proper way to do a quilt to get the measurement to cut our border is this. Um, I am going to just pretend that this is my whole quilt. Okay, it's folded up right now, just for lack of, of space here. So I've got a narrow quilt. I'm going to do my sides first traditionally and then top and bottom. So what I'm going to do is I am going to measure about six inches from the bottom and I've got 24 and a quarter. I've got six inches from the top. What do you mean six? You're about six inches down from the top. Okay. I'm at 24 and a half. And then I'm going to measure right away also straight in the middle of our quilt. And I usually try to use a seam to do this so I can keep my tape measure nice and straight. And I'm at 24 and a quarter. So what I want to do is take those three measurements, add them together, which is, I don't have a calculator here, um, 40, 60, 70, you got the calculator? 24 and 3 eighths would be your... Yes. Medium. So anyways, so what we're going to do is take those three measurements, we're going to add them together and divide by three, and that's what we would cut our borders with. Here's the thing that happens. It's math. And some people's eyes will glaze over and just go, I'm not doing that. That's too much work. So at the very least, let's do it the no math method, which is the way that I'm going to show you today. It is going to keep our quilt nice and square. Again, remember how I said that um, the center of our quilt is the most stable? So I'm going to take my side. I'm going to go, so I'm going the length. So I want to put my sides on first. So I'm going to go the length of my quilt. And I'm going to go in the middle. It doesn't necessarily have to be the exact middle, but I want a seam that's going all the way through and I want to make sure that it's nice and stable. So I've got the seam here in between my rows, so this and is where I'm going to be. the top of your quilt is to your left? The top of my quilt is to my left. 
or it could be the bottom. But, alrighty, so I'm going to just take my border fabric and I am going to line it up on the edge of my quilt. And remember, we still have the salvages on this end because we haven't cut them off, so I want to make sure that I'm going to cut off my salvage. So if you could hand me a, a ruler. Thank you, Tiffany. And I knocked over the iron. Normally we have a little bit more room. When I'm doing borders at home, sometimes I'll go up into my dining table because then I can lay my quilt all the way out so it's all nice and flat. Uh, because we're limited in space here and you might be limited in space at home, this is how you would have to do it. So I am laying this out really nice, but also you could lay it out on the floor. You could do it on the floor, but you're young, you can do it on the floor. Old knees don't work <laughs> on the floor so much. <laughs> so I've put a pin there. So I know this is absolutely perfect. So now I'm just going to extend my quilt make sure it's laid out. One thing that I forgot to tell you, the center of your quilt, before you put your borders on, this is when you can give it a really nice pressing with steam. That way everything will lay nice and flat and uh, you'll have uh, better luck putting your borders on. Again, I'm lining up my border. I'm not stretching anything, but I'm making sure that it all stays together. There's one. And I can go over, lining up. At this point, this is great. My seam is not too close to the end, depending on where um, uh, the size of my quilt. I wanna make sure that my seam is not too close to the edge because then it's very noticeable to the eye. So I will sort of move my strip down a little bit but this one's way over here, so that's going to be great. So now I'm going to cut this end. And before I go on, because our quilt needs two, I will continue, I will do exactly the same thing. Why didn't you just start on that? Oh, because you're right-handed. Because I'm right-handed. I cut better on this end. Whoop. Okay. So I have this beautiful cut edge that I just cut, if I can find it. <laughs> Where did it go? There it is. So I'm lining it right up on the edge of my quilt. If it's not straight, just overlap it a little bit and cut that edge off again. You have enough fabric in your pattern to either diagonally piece all of your um, borders or you can straight piece them whatever your heart desires. Okay. Sometimes we just have to make the most of the space that we have and this is going to work just fine. So I'm going to cut it off on this side. Um, okay, we are just going to put the rest of our strip to the side. I cannot cut my top and border, bottom border at this time because I have to put these on my quilt first. We're going to put these on, fold them out, and then we can measure for our top and our bottom. Alrighty, so I'm going to unpin these. And we have talked about fabric sliding and stuff like that before on our quilt. So we can't just grab this, start at the top, and sew all the way to the bottom because it, your, your border and your quilt will line up at different spots. And I have to tell you, I do absolutely everything in this method, and that's including table runners as well. My sister did a table runner the one time. So what's a table runner like? 30 inches long, 35 inches long. Um, and she put a border on, she goes, I'm not doing that, it's too much work. So she just grabbed her top for her place, or her table runner, started at the top, sewed the borders on, 
put a second border on, went to put it on the wall, and the borders were ruffling. And I said to her, I says, did you put the borders on the right way? And she went, no, it's just a table runner. I did it this way. So I unpicked the border. It was actually a half inch longer than what the table runner was. So if only in 30 inches, you can see that it's gonna make a half inch difference on a, on a border, on a full size quilt, all of a sudden you've got maybe two inches on this border and then another inch on the next one and the next one. So you're gonna have way too much fabric. Alrighty, so I'm just going to put that one to the side. So I'm going to want to pin this to the side and if there's any fullness in the quilt, I want it to be distributed evenly. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to, what I say is quarter my border. So I'm taking my border and I'm finding the center point and I'm going to mark it with a pin. Um, you could also use an iron and press a seam or um, a marker press or, a fold, yeah. or press a fold, whatever you like. So I've got the center marked. I'm going to fold it one more time. And I'm going to find the quarter. So I'm going to put this in the fold like that. I'm going to open my strip and I want to put a pin in that position on both sides. So now my strip is marked in the quarters. I'm going to do the exact same thing with my quilt. So I'm going to find the center point. So the center point just happens to be seam on this quilt, which works out perfectly fine. It will be in this seam right there. When I'm finding my quarters, I'm going to fold it in half like this, but I am not going to line up my seam allowance with the edge of my quilt. I have to line up because if, if my quilt is open, you're not going to see the seam allowance because it goes just to the seam. So I need to line up this pin that I pinned right on the edge of the quilt, and that will find our per perfect quarters. I remember when I started out, I didn't do that, and it was always a little off, and I couldn't figure out why. But that was the reason. Alrighty. So that quarter happens to be on a point. This quarter is in the middle of a block and that's because it just works that way. Okay, so now that I have these, all I have to do is line up these pins with my strip, making sure I'm putting them right sides together. There's my center. I'm going to line the two pins up and I am just going to pin with one pin. I'm going to find my quarter. Line it up. Pin. I'm also going to go to the very end. I'm going to line these up absolutely perfectly. Now at this point, I can put a few more pins if I like. And what are you going to do if there's any fullness? Yeah, I'm hoping there's going to be a spot. <laughs> so when I go to put a pin in between the two pins, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab it and I'm going to give a little tug and make sure everything lays straight. I'm holding these pins with my thumbs, my fingers, and I'm just going to walk my fingers over and that's the part that I want it to be together. So again, any part. I can put as few or as many pins in as I want, but I do like to pin at least on the quarters and one extra. Okay. These are staying nice and flat. Okay. 
and I'm going to the end. Pinning. Oops. I have a little bit of fullness on this part. So I would do one of two things. If my quilt was really, really, really straight, I could double check and make sure that it was pinned properly. That it, but it looks fine. So I just have a little bit of fullness here. I probably stretched it, or maybe this block was an eighth of an inch bigger than the other ones. It really doesn't matter. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab and I'm going to pull. So I want it to lay nice and flat, grab that center, and I'm going to give it a pin. Normally, what I would like to do is sew with my quilt on the top so I can see which way my seams are going. But I'm not at this point because I have some fullness in my quilt. So what I want to do is I want to sew with the full part on the bottom. My feed dogs will help um, uh, sew that extra, distribute that extra width in between my pins. Alrighty? Any questions so far? Let me just get my chair, move the camera, and off we go. Okay. So I've just got a leader here to start. I'm going to find my quilt, and off I go. All right. Um, here's one thing that I'm going to do with this machine. Um, I think I talked about it before. Right now, my foot comes up when I have it in the needle down position. I'm just going to take that feature off right now, my automatic presser foot lift, because what I want to do is because I have such a bulk of a quilt that I have to um, move around. What I w I'm going to have to do is take a lot of weight and give it some pulls and stuff. I want to make sure that that foot is helping hold the, the needle in place, the fabric in place. Um, otherwise, I might get too much needle deflection. Okay, so you can see that I have a little bit of fullness there. I'm just going to give it a little pull. I'm also rolling it over my hand because now this is an inside circle. An inside circle takes less than an outside circle, so it will help distribute some of that. And I'm just going to sew. I'm going to sew up until my thumb. I'm going to stop. I'm going to redistribute everything. I do not want to sew and have my fabric pucker pull the pin out and move it down because nothing is going to stay straight. I want to make sure that all the fabric that's in between the pins stays in between the pins. stretch so I know it's good here if it's really bad I could always give it a little bit of a tug there but I want to make sure that right up until the pin that it stayed where it was supposed to stay finger and I can go to the next one so I still have a little bit of fullness there which is very common just giving it a little bit of a little bit of a tug curling it a little bit, making sure that all that excess fabric stays within the pins. Sewed right up to the pin. Okay, I'm also peeking underneath and finding out where my seams are, so I want to make sure that they stay in the direction that we've had them pressed in. seam coming up. I want to make sure now I have a little bit of fullness on the top. Again I want to stretch it and I want to keep that distributed exactly where it is. I can also start feeding it in a little bit like this. Just keeping that extra fabric. I do not want it to buckle onto my pin. I want to keep all that. Normally I'd be using my purple thing with this. Thank you Tiffany. She's got a heavier pin here. I forgot my purple thing at the shop. 
so there you go. I'm just going to take this out for a minute. I wouldn't normally do this, but I just want to show you while we're at this spot. So that little bit of fullness that was in there, it's distributed absolutely perfectly. And when I pull, um, press that open, it'll lay nice and flat. Got it? All right, let's continue on. Because I cut my thread, I'm just gonna overlap over that inch or so. Again, arranging my quilt on my table so it's not pulling on my sewing machine, helping my feed dogs out. Again, I'm leaving my pin right in there till the very last second. So it seems like this side of my quilt is um, lining up a little bit better. So life will be good. Yeah, you had that one pin slip out while you were pinning it. I'm wondering. I'm wondering I... it might have moved just a little bit. Yeah. I don't think you can see, but when I sewed my border uh, strips together, it didn't quite line up absolutely perfect. So mm -hmm. all I'm doing is I've lined up the strip back here and I've lined up the strip here and this teeny weeny little corner is hanging off into Never Never Land. I don't even know if you can see it, but I'm just gonna follow my toe up onto this seam. So at that one spot, my seam allowance is gonna be ever so slightly bigger, but no one's gonna see it at the end of the day. I zoomed in, but I don't know how well. Happened. Yeah, it was ever so slightly. It was it was barely barely off, but we we strive for perfection when we're sewing, but um, sometimes we just have to know how to fudge. down to the end and here on the end you can see my strip matches perfectly with the edge of my quilt. Oops, sorry Tim. So we are going to um, can you put my foot up? There. Can you oh. put my foot up? <laughs> Please, it's sticking the sewing machine. There we go. So now what I want to do is I want to press this away from my quilt. I always press my seam towards my border because again, that's the way it's gonna to want to, use, to work. All this fabric normally has a lot of um, seams. So it's gonna to wanna to press that way anyways. You really should have brought the long I, I really should have brought the long mat. I don't know if I have to do this. So then on this side, we would do exactly the same thing. We're going to take um, our quilt and we're going to quarter it and we're going to put the border on this side. I don't know that you have to watch me put another border on. How about you try and not let the pin slip this time? Try not to let the pin slip and see if it actually yeah. matches? Mm -hmm. You can try that. Does anyone have any questions? This might be a quick one today. Yeah, it is, yeah. Um, now remember, again, like I said, if you can't do the math and add three places together and divide it by three, if that just hurts your brain too much, at least do this. 
it's going to keep your quilt nice and flat your uh, long armor is not going to grumble at you you know what, if you get this uh, last border on you can measure and cut your top and bottom borders i could i could or not last border the, this last side border. all right Oop. my rotary cutter was open the little girl guides would uh, get me <laughs> I just cut off a dog ear on my border. And finding my center. I feel like I should be humming or something. You don't want me to do that though. No. No, you don't want me to do that. Unfortunately, then we'd be worried about copyright infringement. <laughs> Alrighty, so here I have my pins again, my quarters on my border, my quarters on my quilt, making sure I find the right side, right sides together. And then because it's a batik, I had to just find the seam. Just to be on the safe side, I wanted to make sure that the seam was on the right, um, facing up. Matching pin to pin, matching end. Oh, and we still have binding to talk about. And we still have binding. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I almost yeah. forgot about that. Oh, I didn't. Okay. Everything seems pretty good on this end. Sometimes the quilt will have a little bit of difference too, just because maybe I aggressively pressed the one side too much um, and stretched it out a little bit. So see, I still have a little bit of, just a tiny little bit, but a little bit of um, fullness here. So I'm wondering if that's not what I did, is maybe just um, overzealously press the quilt. I could have stretched a little bit. This, putting my border on like that, will just bring everything all back in again and it'll lay nice and flat. And sometimes it's from holding our quilts up and going, look at my quilt. And as we pull on the outsides, it, uh, it'll stretch. It'll stretch. It'll just stretch. Just at the outside. And probably this is the top. So it's like, look what I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So now so that I have my, my border pinned on, I can sew it all down. And then once it's sewn, we are going to press it out. And then we're going to go again back into the middle and we're going to cut our top and bottom border. So I am going to measure my border again through some center line, center-ish line on my quilt. And I really do want to press this before I actually cut it. But just for today, we'll just pretend. So I'm going to go through. So I'm, I folded my border out. So I'm measuring from the outside border here to the outside border there. Again, I can't cut it because it's not sewn here. So I have my pins in there. Doing exactly the same thing. I'm going to find my quarters. I'm gonna find the quarters of my quilt. Sew the border on the top and bottom, press it out. And then I'm going to go to my second border and do it all over again. Yes, it takes some time. 
and sometimes we're tired of working on our quilt because all the piecing's done and we want to hurry this apart but the borders deserve as much care as the rest of the quilt does does um, let's make sure our quilts are beautiful lay nice and flat everything is wonderful um, and we're going to go from there all right I did want to touch on binding a little bit um, hopefully Tiff and I are going to be able to make a video on my regular 101 Facebook page um, on how to do borders step by step so if, I'm sorry not borders but binding how to do binding step by step um, it's on my chair alrighty so why do we sew on a diagonal? Okay, do I have a diagonal? I don't have a diagonal seam on any of these. Yeah, on the one you sewed. Oh, this one. Yeah, okay, right. Okay. <laughs> so when we sew, um, when we make our binding, I like to make my binding all two and a half inch, and then I never have to think about how I'm going to sew them together. But what I'm going to do is once they're all sewn together, I'm going um, to press. One of those was not pressed open. You're going to want to. This press one's pressed open. Yeah, but the other one. Oh yeah, yeah yeah. That's why I'm using this part. Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to do the whole thing. Okay. Yeah. So I am going to press my binding in half. I am also to going to here. press, this is the one with the straight seam, because I want to show you what ends up happening. I actually sewed the wrong side to the right side. Did you notice that? Oh, you're funny. That's funny. Just because it's my sample, my visual aid, I don't have to worry about that, but. Okay. So we have our quilt and we're ready to put our binding on it. What we're going to do is if this was my quilt, I would be sewing it onto the back and I'd be rolling it over. So what happens when I do binding is I'm going to have a quarter inch seam and then this is going to fold over again like that. How are you for, can you see? Um. So when I sew this onto the edge of my quilt, I have a quarter inch seam. I'm going to press it over and then the other part will press like this. So look at all the bulk with that straight seam. Stop moving. Okay. Alrighty. What you can feel a huge lump there. It's going to be hard to sew through as well, uh, but it's not as visible as visual pleasing. When I do a diagonal seam, when I fold it, it's reducing that bulk. Our seam goes from this spot to this spot. So when I sew with my quarter inch seam and I fold it over, my diagonal seam runs from here on the one side to over there. So it's, it's totally not lined up. So I cannot feel any bulk in any specific spot going to be greater to sew on, much more pleasing. Um, if you do enter your quilt in any show, the judges, that's one of the things that they're going to check that your binding is done right. Um, but that's why we always sew our binding with a diagonal seam and pressed open. So when we do our video, we will go step by step on how to turn the corners, sewing the binding on the um, front hand sewing on the back as well as sewing it on the back and machine stitching it onto the front. That may take us two weeks to get out. We'll film it next week, but it usually takes another week to get edited. Tiffany has to make me look good. <laughs> so um, that can be a job sometimes. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions before we uh, yeah. sign off today? Or do you have any, any questions even on the binding as well, just because we're just touching on that really quickly. Any questions at all before we finish this project? Because this is the this last one. This will be our last time. That's right. That's right. So do you want to check and see if there's any, um, <laughs> any questions? 
Yes, yeah, but say hi to your followers. If not, um, this will be goodbye and thank you from Tiffany and myself in Nugget. We've really enjoyed this sew along. I don't know what we will have to, um, if we're going to do another one next year or if we do something else, we will have to see. <laughs> And she says, no, I'm leaving now. There we go. I got to so. look at a strip of fabric. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's because she wants to go on the wool mat. Oh, it's probably warm because you're it just is. ironing on it, too. It is. Um, so we've really enjoyed ourselves, everybody. Um, loving what you're posting on our Facebook group. Um, it will stay there for a while. I know some of the ladies had some projects that they had to catch up on. So they've been watching, but they haven't started. But everything's going to still stay there. And so even if we're, we're past the time that we're, we're doing it live, please keep posting um, uh, your pictures on it. I know we just got one about a month ago. Somebody posted for the uh, 2023 sew along. So it's still Janet wonderful to says, see. Janet thank you for another great sew along. Oh, thanks, Janet. Um, so thank you uh, again from Tiffany and myself uh, inviting me uh, into your sewing room and sewing along with another wonderful pattern. Happy quilting everybody. Bye now.